hi this is anil from learning lad and welcome back to the c programming tutorials so in this tutorial we're gonna see how we can write a c program to read a password from the user so normally in c programming whenever you're gonna enter the input through the keyboard at that time whatever the key you're gonna press in your keyboard you know that particular character will be displayed on the screen so if you guys are reading a password at that time you know displaying the characters entered by the user to the screen is not going to be the convenient option so here what we're going to do is instead of displaying the characters entered by the user we're going to display star or any other symbols so here in this tutorial before starting with this program i want to show you guys how this program is going to behave you know once we done with it so i have already created a project called password input and i have written the code of our program which i'm going to explain in this tutorial so you know before writing this code we're going to see how this program is going to run so i'm going to build and run this project so it's going to be build and run and uh, you know it says please enter the password length is 1 to 15 it means i can enter the password of minimum one character long or maximum 15 character long so i'm gonna enter my password here you know once i enter the characters uh, instead of displaying the characters here we are displaying the star symbol so if i hit the enter button it says your password is learning lad so i'm gonna close this and i'm gonna build and run it again and this time i'm not gonna enter any password so i'm just gonna directly hit the enter button in my keyboard and it says no password entered and i'm gonna run it one more time and this time what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna enter a password of more than 15 characters so i'm gonna enter my password and when i enter the 16th character it says your password length exceeds maximum password length only first 15 characters will be considered so here actually i have entered learning lad rocks so that s in rocks happens to be the 16th character of the password that's why you know that s will be ignored and the previous 15 characters which is learning lad rock will be saved and uh, that is what is gonna displays right here all right now we're gonna run this one more time so it's gonna be build and run and this time i'm gonna enter my password and uh, while entering the password what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna press the uh, spaces you guys can see actually now i am pressing the space key in my keyboard but you know this program is ignoring the spaces and also if i uh, enter the tab key then also it is ignoring that and another thing is uh, once you enter your password and uh, for example i'm just gonna add some more characters here and now if i feel that okay i may have done some mistake here so i just want to go back and uh, correct it so at that time if i press the backspace key then you guys can see the password has been removed and i can enter it again so i'm gonna enter my password and if i hit the enter button you know it's just gonna displace the password which i have entered right now so so these are the things will be done in the program that we're gonna write right now so now we're gonna see how we can write this program so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna close this project and then i'm gonna create a new project and it's gonna be the console application and we're gonna click on next and i'm gonna select c and then uh, we need to give the project title so i'm gonna say password input and i'm gonna say english that's because i'm gonna make the same tutorial in hindi also so if you guys are comfortable with the language hindi then you guys can check out that tutorial in my youtube channel learning lad hindi all right now we're gonna click on next and we're gonna click on finish so now here in this management window inside this project you can see the project which i have created right now which is the password input english and inside this sources folder if i open it up you know you guys can see some pre-written code so i'm just gonna zoom this one so that you know you guys can have a better view of the code which i'm gonna write and also i'm gonna remove all these codes and we're gonna close this management window also so we're gonna get some more space here all right so now before writing this program i want to tell you guys how this program is going to work so here what we're going to do is 
we're gonna store the password entered by the user as a string value and also we're gonna read one character at a time from the user and then all of you know that in this program we're not going to be displaying the characters entered by the user to the screen instead of that we're going to be displaying some symbols like star or any other symbols which you choose so here what we're going to do is we're going to use a function called getCH. this getCH function is a special function and what it does is it's going to read one character at a time from the keyboard and the special thing is you know it will not display that character to the screen so we're gonna take this advantage and we're gonna write our code so now first we're gonna see what are the header files that we're gonna need in this program so the first header file that we're gonna need is the stdio.h header file so i'm gonna include this header file using the preprocessor directive hash include so it's gonna be stdio.h uh, we are including this header file because we're going to be using the functions like printf etc here so the next header file that we're going to need is the string.h so it's going to be string.h and this string.h header file allows us to use the functions like string length function and string copy functions which you're going to be using in this program and the last header file that we're going to need in this program is going to be the conio.h header file so it's going to be conio.h now this conio.h header file allows us to use the function getch so as i told you before we're going to be depending on this function getch because it allows us to read the character from the keyboard without displaying it to the screen so uh, Another thing about this conio.h header file is not all the compilers support this conio.h header file. So if your compiler is not supporting this conio.h header file, then you guys can download and install the compiler which supports this file and run this program. And also if you guys are using the Linux operating system, then there is a way by using that you can use the functions available uh, from this conio.h so all you need to do is do a simple google search and you'll get more information all right now we're gonna write our main function so our main function is gonna have the return type as int and uh, our main function is not gonna take any parameters and we're gonna return a value of zero from our main function so now we need to declare the variables that we're gonna need or you know that we're gonna use in our program so the first variable that we're gonna need is a variable to store the maximum password length so it's gonna be an integer variable and i'm gonna call it as max password length and i'm gonna initialize this variable with a value of 15. so this max password length variable is going to contain the maximum characters that can be entered as a password and another thing is this variable is going to be a constant variable in this program which means that you know once i declare and initialize this variable you know this variable's value will not change and also if you guys want to have a password of you know maximum eight character long or 10 character long just change the value of this variable in your source code and uh, now i'm gonna make this variable as the constant variable by using this const keyword you know with this with its declaration so the next thing that we need to do is as i told you before here in this program we're gonna be storing the password as a string value and uh, all of you know that in c programming if you guys want to store a string value then we need to use a character array so we're going to declare a character array here and i'm going to call my array as password and here in this square brackets we need to specify the number of elements we want to store in this password array so obviously you guys may be thinking like you know the maximum number of characters that the user can enter is going to be 15 so we're going to need 15 elements in this uh, password array so the size of this password array is going to be 15 right so here you know just gonna copy this variable now and i'm gonna paste it here and then we need to add plus one here so now why we need to add this plus one here 15 plus one 16 elements if we're gonna be reading the password of length 15 
So here, as I told you before, you know, we're gonna be storing the password as a string value. In C programming, a string is a bunch of characters terminated by a string termination character or, you know, the null character. So here, let's assume that this is gonna be our password array. So all of you know that the index of an array is gonna start from zero. So here in this array, I have uh, 16 elements. So the index is gonna start from zero and the last element will be at the index 15. So now let's assume that we're just gonna have the max password length or you know, 15 elements in this password array. So what's gonna happen? So here, you know, when we have the array size as 15, here, you know, this cell will not be available for us. So the first element will be at the index zero and the last element will be at the index 14. So totally 15 elements or, you know, totally we can save 15 characters in this uh, array password. So here, let's assume that the user is gonna enter the uh, input or, you know, the password as a nil. So we're gonna store A here in the first position, N in the second, and I in the third element and L in the fourth element. So now, as I told you before, we need to terminate this with a string termination character or you know the null character because we're gonna be treating this password as a string value. So here we can add this string termination character here in the index four. So this is gonna work properly. Now here, the thing is, the user can enter maximum 15 characters. So now let's say the user is going to enter 15 characters. So what's going to happen? Let's say user is going to enter learning lad rock. So here E, so C and K. So the user is going to enter 15 characters. So now these 15 characters can be stored in this password array. So the first character L will be at the index zero and the last character K will be at the index 14. Now, as I told you before, we're gonna be storing our password as a string value. So we need to store this string termination character. So why are we gonna store that string termination character? You know, if we store that, it's gonna be outside this uh, password array. So, you know, only 15 elements can be stored here in this array now. So we're gonna be storing this string termination character outside this character array. So at that case, this location may belong to some other programs. So we're gonna be altering the content of this location so some other programs may crash or maybe this location will be used by our own program and our program may crash or misbehave. So just to avoid these kind of situations, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add plus one here. So adding this plus one allows us another memory location where we can store this string termination character. So here, the thing is, if we don't add this one here at that time, if the user is gonna enter less than 15 characters, then your program will work properly. But just in case, if the user is gonna enter a password of 15 characters, then you know there is no way that you can store the string termination character inside that array. So for that purpose, we're gonna be adding plus one here. All right, now the next variable that we're gonna need in this program is gonna be a character variable. And I'm gonna call this variable as ch. As I told you before, we're gonna be reading one character at a time from the user. So we're gonna be storing that character in this variable ch. Now the next variable that we're gonna need is called character position. And I'm gonna initialize this variable with the value of zero. So this character position variable will contain the index of this password array. It will tell us where we want to store the character. For example, you know, when you run this program, this character position will contain a value of zero. So it will point to first position of this array. So once you store the character here in this first position, it will point to the second position. And once you store the value here, the uh, character position variable will point to the next location. So this character position variable is used to store the index of this um, password array. So by default, first it will 
point to the very beginning of this password array. All right. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we can ask the user to enter the password. So I'm going to use the printf statement and here I'm just going to write, please enter the password. And then I want to say length one to percentage D and then let's insert a new line here. And then here we're going to say max password length. All right. Now this will print out, please enter the password length one to 15. So the minimum character required for this password is going to be one and the maximum number of characters can present in that password is going to be 15. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start reading the characters from the user. So as I told you before, we're going to be reading one character at a time from the user. So we need to loop through certain set of statements and that's why we're going to need a loop here. So I'm going to use a while loop and if you guys want to use any other loop like for loop, you guys can do that. And also I'm going to make this loop as an infinite loop. That means that, you know, here in the condition part of this while loop, I'm going to write one, which is considered as true. So this condition of this while will always be true. And that's why this while loop will execute forever. So now you may be asking, okay, if you're going to be using this infinite loop, then when we're going to be coming out of this while loop. So here, as I told you before, we're going to be using this loop to read one character at a time from the user. So what's going to happen is let's say the user is going to enter the password one by one. So first user is going to enter, let's say A, and then he's going to enter N and then he's going to enter I and then he's going to enter L. So let's say this is the password of the user. So after entering his password, the user will hit the enter button. So once the user is going to hit the enter button in his keyboard, we will come to know that, okay, this is the end of the user's password. So we need to stop here. So here in this program, what we can do is when the user is going to hit the enter button and we're going to be coming out of this while loop. All right. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to read a character from the user. And uh, as I told you before, here we're going to be using the getch function. The speciality of this getch function is it's going to read one character at a time from the keyboard. And while doing that, it will not display that character to the screen. And also here we're going to be storing that character in this ch variable. So it's going to be get ch. And now we have read one character by using this get ch function. And also we haven't displayed this character to the screen. So the next thing is whenever you're going to use the character variables in your program or whenever you're going to read a character from the keyboard at that time, the ASCII value of that character will be used, which is nothing but with this statement, whatever the character the user is going to enter in this key in his keyboard, that character's ASCII value will be returned by this getch function and that ASCII value will be stored in this ch variable. So now, as I told you before, we need to stop this while loop when the user is going to hit the enter button. So how are we going to come to know that the user has pressed the enter key in his keyboard? So as I told you before, the uh, ch variable here will get the ASCII value of the key entered by the user in his keyboard. So every key has a unique ASCII value. The enter button has a separate ASCII value. The tab space have separate ASCII values. The character ABCD also have the separate unique ASCII values. So by using that ASCII values, we're going to be checking which key the user has entered. So here, first we're going to check whether the user has pressed the enter key in his keyboard. So I'm going to use the if statement here. And it's going to be if ch equal to remember here, this equal to is the comparison operator and I'm going to write 13. So here this 13 is the ASCII value of the enter button. So when the user is going to hit the enter button in his keyboard, the get ch function is going to return a value of 13 and that 13 will be stored in the ch variable. And with this statement, if the ch variable contains a value of 13 that means the user has pressed the enter key so when the user presses enter key in his keyboard what we want to do is 
we want to stop reading characters or you know passwords from the user so what we want to do we want to come out of this while loop and for that purpose i'm going to use the break statement here when the user is going to press the enter key we're going to be coming out of this while loop so here i'm just going to write a comment so i'm going to say when user hits enter button all right so now we have seen what's going to happen if the user hits the enter button so now the next thing is what we need to do if the user hits the backspace key so how are we going to check for the backspace key so it's going to be same as the enter key we're going to have a else if condition here and here we're going to be checking again if ch comparison operator equal to and then the ascii value of 8 so the ascii value for the backspace key is 8 if the user is going to press the backspace key in his keyboard then this get c8 function is going to return a value of 8 and that will be stored in this ch variable so this if condition is going to fail because ch is containing 8 8 is not equal to 13 so this if condition is going to fail and that's why this else if condition will be checked is ch is containing a value of 8 yes it is containing so the uh, statements inside this block will be executed so now here whatever the statements that we can write i will explain later because you know when the user is going to hit the backspace key at that time we need to process this password array all right now uh, i just want to make a note here when the user is going to hit the backspace key all right now we have seen for the enter button and also we have seen for the backspace key now what if the user is going to hit the uh, tab or a space so here in this program when the user is going to enter the password i don't want the tab and space to be part of the password for example you know user is going to enter a n and then space and then l i don't want this space to be part of this password and also i don't want the tab to be part of this password that's why what i'm going to do is if the user is going to enter a space or a tab i just gonna ignore that if you guys want the space and tab to be part of the password then you don't need to write this condition so here i'm gonna write else if and then we're gonna check for space and tab here so it's gonna be ch equal to 32 or ch comparison operator equal to 9 so here this 32 is the ascii value of the space key and this 9 is the ascii value of the tab button so if the user is going to hit the space key or the tab key then what we want to do so here what happens is when the user is going to hit the space this get the function is going to return the value of 32 which is the ascii value of the space so this 32 will be stored in this ch and uh, this condition is going to fail because 32 is not equal to 13 and this condition is also going to fail because 32 is not equal to 8 so here this condition is going to fail because 32 is equal to 32 and since any one of this or operator is going to uh, succeed you know the statement that we're going to have here will be executed so now the thing is what we want to do if the user is going to hit this space or you know the tab as i told you before we want to ignore the space and the tab so all you need to do is just ignore that and continue with the next characters entered by the user so here to continue with the next iteration of the loop we need to use the continue statement so it's going to be continue here and uh, here let me have a quick comment and i'm gonna say when user hits space or tab all right so now we have seen what we need to do if the user is gonna hit the enter button what we need to do if the user is gonna hit the backspace key and also what we need to do if the user is gonna hit the uh, space or a tab 
Next, we need to see what we have to do if the user is going to enter a valid character. What if the user is going to enter a key which is not the enter button, not the backspace key or not the space or tab key. So what we're going to do is we're going to store the character entered by the user in the password array. So before storing the character in this password array, we need to make sure that our password array has enough space to store that character. So here, how are we going to check whether this password array has enough space or not? So here in this program, what happens is our character position variable just excuse my handwriting here you know i'm just using the uh, mouse to write so the character position variable will be pointing to this first element in the beginning so when we're going to read the proper character we want to store this in this position so once we store the character in this position this variable will be incremented to the next position so like that it will be incremented till this 14th uh, position that's because here in this program the user can enter a maximum of 15 characters so if you look at this program the 15 characters are gonna be from the index 0 to 14 in this last 15th index will be used to store the string termination character so we can't store the value entered by the user in this last element so we can only store the characters entered by the user from the index 0 to index 14 in this password array. So once this password array is going to be filled or uh, you know once this password array contains all those 15 characters entered by the user this character position variable will point to 15. So once the character position variable contains a value of 15 it means that the password array has no space to contain the character entered by the user or in other words the user has entered all the 15 characters that he can enter so here we're gonna check whether this password array has space or not by using the character position variable so my condition is gonna be if character position is containing a value which is less than 15 which is this max password length so since the array index are going to be starting from zero here we're going to be having less than max password length or you know less than 15. so if the array has this space what we're going to do is we're going to store the character in the password array so we're going to store the character and that's why first we're going to write the array name which is going to be password and then here we need to specify the uh, index where we want to store which is going to be pointed by this character position variable and uh, we're going to be storing the value stored in the ch variable so this statement will store the value specified in the ch variable at the index specified by this character position variable in this array password so after that what we need to do is we need to increment the value of this character position variable so the next character entered by the user will be stored in the next location so we're gonna write character position plus plus all right now the next thing that we need to do is as i told you before the uh, get c8 function will not display the character it's gonna read so by taking that as an advantage what we're gonna do is we're gonna display the character that we want to display to the screen so here i'm gonna use printf and here i'm just gonna print out star so here if you want to print out any other symbol just specify that here so this is what we're gonna do if the array has space or you know if the array can contain the characters entered by the user else if the array is filled or you know if the user has entered all his 15 characters then we're just gonna display a method selling telling that your input exceeds maximum password length of percentage d so only 
first percentage d characters will be considered so here we're gonna refer the max password length variable twice so here we're just displaying that you know once the user is gonna enter more than 15 characters we're gonna say your input exceeds the maximum password length of 15 so we are considering only the first 15 characters you have entered and after displaying this message we're just gonna stop reading the characters from the user so we can add the break statement here all right now this is what we're gonna do if the user is gonna enter the proper input now the next thing is what we need to do if the user is gonna enter the backspace character so we're gonna see that so here in this program till now what we're doing is so here let's assume that this is gonna be the console window which is the black command prompt window you can see and uh, this is where we're going to be entering your password so first it says please enter your password maximum length 1 to 15 so here in the next line the cursor will be blinking here waiting for the user to enter the characters and also for this password array this character position variable will be pointing to the first position now if the user is going to enter the character a and at that time this a is not a space not a tab not a backspace and not the enter button so first we're gonna check whether this password array has enough space to store this character a yes we have space and that's why we can store this character in this index zero at this position and then we're gonna increment the value of this character position variable so it will point to the next element it means that when we read the next character from the user we're gonna store that in this position and after doing that what we're gonna do is we're gonna display a star here in this place in the command win window and after displaying the star the cursor which was here will be moved to the next cell so it will start blinking here so let's say now the user is gonna enter the value of b so now this b is a proper character means it is not a space not a tab not a backspace or not the enter button and also we have space in this password array so this b will be stored here in this position and then this character position variable will be incremented to point to the next location and then we're going to be displaying a star symbol here in this place and after that the cursor will go to next position or next cell and start blinking here now let's say the user is going to enter the value of c and again this is not a space tab backspace or the enter button and also we have space in this password array so this c will be stored in this position after that this character position variable will be incremented to next position so that the next character we're gonna read from the user will be stored here and then we're gonna display a star symbol here to the screen and then after displaying this star symbol the cursor will move to next position and it will start blinking here so now let's say the user is gonna think that he has done some mistake while entering his password so what he wants to do is he wants to go back and correct his password so at that time the user is gonna hit the backspace key to move backwards so here the user is gonna hit the backspace button so now when the user is gonna hit the backspace key what he wants to do is he wants to go back to the previous position and for that character he wants to enter a new character now here in this password array our character position variable is pointing to this position so since the user wants to go back to previous position we need to bring back this character position to previous position so we can do that by decrementing the value of this character position by one so we can make the character position variable to point to this location and after coming to this position the user wants to change the value here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this value with this null character 
and then here also what we need to do is since the cursor will be pointing here we want to bring it back to this position and then we want to remove this star and make the cursor blink here for that purpose what we need to do is we need to remove this star this star so to remove this star what we're gonna do is we're gonna override this with a blank space so now let's uh, once again see what we're gonna do so here in this code when the user is gonna hit the backspace key first in this password array we want to bring this character position variable one position back so that it can point to this character so we're gonna bring it back to this position so we need to decrement the value of this character position so here we're gonna do that character position minus minus and then after doing that uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the value of this location with the null value actually you don't need to change the value of this uh, cell because when the user is going to enter a new value it will overwrite this value whatever the value stored here in this location will be overwritten so we're just going to override this value with the null value and we can do that by using the array name which is the password and the position by using the character position equal to null value so this one and after that this is for the password array now here in this command prompt window we need to bring the cursor from this position to this position so we can bring the cursor back by using an escape character called slash b so we're just gonna use the printf statement and we're gonna write slash b here so this slash b will bring the cursor from this position to this position one step backwards now here the star will be there we need to overwrite this star so to overwrite this star we're just gonna display a blank character so i'm just gonna add a space here blank space here and after that after overwriting this star with a blank space the cursor will again move to the next location and start blinking here so now again we need to bring it back to this position so we're just gonna add another slash b here so now the cursor will again come back to this position and this will look like an empty position and now let's say the user is gonna enter the value of e so this e is the is not a space or a tab or the enter button so this this can be stored in the password array and also we have enough enough space in this password array so this character position variable is now pointing to this position this position at the index 2 so we're going to be storing this e here here so whatever the null character that we have overridden here will again be overridden with the value of e and and after that this character position will be incremented to next position again and again here you know the star will be displayed here for this um this cell and again the cursor will move to next position and start blinking so that's what is going to happen here in this program so now here till what time we need to process this backspace for example let's say the user is going to hit the backspace again and again and again so now what happens is you know once we are in this position in this position if the user is going to hit the backspace we're going to come back to this position if the user is going to hit the backspace again we're going to come back to this position if the user is going to hit the backspace again we're going to come back to this position but if the user is going to hit the backspace again then we can't go to this position which is nothing but we can remove all the characters entered by the user so once we remove all the characters entered by the user and again if the user is going to hit the backspace key then we don't have anything to remove or here if you look at this password array you know once we remove the character which is present in the first element of this password array we can't move backwards anymore so we just need to stop once we reach this beginning 
so here we need to have a condition in this um, case when the user is going to hit the backspace key so we can have the condition in here and the condition is if the character position is going to contain a value which is greater than zero then only we're gonna remove the values entered by the user so once this character positions value becomes zero at that time you know we're gonna be removing this character and after that we can't move backwards we're gonna stop right here you know after reaching the start of this password array or after removing all the characters entered by the user so now this program will work properly for the backspace keys entered by the user now the next thing is what we want to do after reading all the characters entered by the user so here as i told you before we're going to be storing the password as the string value so after reading all the passwords entered by the user we need to add the string termination character at the end for that uh, password so here from the user we're not reading the string termination character we are just reading the whatever the character entered by the user for example if the user is going to enter a b c d then we are reading this a b c d and we are storing this in the password array we're not adding the string termination character since we are uh, storing our password like a string we need to add this string termination character we can add that outside this while loop so it's going to be password and then here the position will be pointed by the character position equal to the string termination character and uh, after that the last thing that we want to do is we want to check whether the user has entered any password if the user has entered any password we're just going to display that else we're going to say user has not entered any password so what can happen is when the command prompt is going to display the user to enter the password at that time user can directly hit the enter button so at that time you know we will not be reading any character from the user so we're just going to check that whether the password array contains any characters entered by the user so to check whether the user has entered any password we can use the string length function since we are storing this password as a string value you know we can check out the length of the string if the user has entered any password then there will be some length otherwise the length will be zero so we're going to check that so it's going to be if strlen which is the string length function on this password array if it is equal to zero then we're just gonna say using the printf function that no password entered else if the length is not zero then we're just gonna display the password entered by the user so here is gonna be printf and here we're gonna say password is percentage yes and here we're gonna refer password and also before this statement let's add a new line just to make our output pretty just the slash n character escape character to add the new line now i'm gonna save this program and i'm gonna build and run this and now please enter the password length 1 to 15 so my password is gonna be and now you guys can see once i enter the password it is not displayed to the screen only the star will be displayed and if i hit the enter button it says password is learning lad and i'm gonna run it again and this time i'm gonna enter no password and i'm just gonna directly hit the enter button it says no password entered and i'm gonna build and run it again and this time i'm gonna enter a password and then i'm gonna hit space and then i'm gonna hit tab button you guys can see those characters will be ignored here and then i'm gonna enter some other characters and i'm gonna hit the enter button it says password is unshitty and i'm gonna run it again and this time i'm gonna enter my password and then i just gonna think that okay i may have entered the wrong password so i just want to correct it by pressing the backspace key and um, uh, this time i'm gonna enter some more text 
you know after correcting my password and i'm gonna hit the enter button it says password is anil and uh, again i'm gonna run it again mm -hmm. and this time i'm gonna enter a password of length more than 15 so i'm gonna enter learning layer rock your input exceeds minimum maximum password length of 15 so only first 15 character will be considered and it says password is learning lad rock actually i just entered learning lad rocks and that s happens to be the 16th character so that will be ignored and the previous or you know the first 15 character will be considered and that is learning lad rock so this is how our program is going to work now if you guys may want to develop a program where uh, you're going to be checking the password entered by the user to some previously saved password and depending on that comparison you're going to say the login was successful or not then you guys can do that with this program also just going to add another character array here care and then i'm going to call that array as login password and then i'm going to store a string in this login password so it's going to be learning lad and also remember that you know i have added this l as capital you know both the times so i just need to remember this while entering the password so now we're gonna check for the password entered by the user with this password so if this matches then we're gonna say login success else we're gonna say login failure so i just want to comment out this uh, printf statement which is here in the else block and then we're gonna have another if statement and it's gonna be string comparison strcmp and we're gonna compare our password with the login password and uh, if this function is gonna return zero it means that both the passwords has matched and in that case we're just gonna print out login success you know this strcmp function is gonna return a value of zero if these two strings match you know these two arrays containing the same characters else we're just gonna say login failure so it's gonna be login failure and uh, i'm gonna save this program and then i'm gonna build and run this and this time i'm gonna enter my password as anil and if i hit the enter button it says login failure and uh, i'm gonna run it again and this time i'm gonna enter learning lad in small letters all small letters and it says login failure because i need to enter it just like the way i have specified here you know make both the else as capital and this time i'm gonna enter my password just like the way i have specified here you know learning lad and then i'm gonna hit the enter button it says login success now if you guys want to ignore this case while comparing the passwords then you guys can use the stricmp function which will ignore the case so this is it guys this is how you guys can uh, read the password from the user and instead of displaying those characters to the screen you guys can display the star or any other symbols so if you guys think that you guys have learned something from this tutorial then please subscribe to my channel and also like this video and share it with your friends and colleagues once again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial